So let's get right to it. In the year 1610, Galileo Galilei published his observations through his telescope to argue in favor of a sun-centered cosmological model against the then predominant view that the sun revolved around the earth. He demonstrated through his telescope to the Jesuit college and at that time he encountered very little resistance. However, then in the year 1632, he published a paper entitled The Dialogue Concerning Two Chief Worldview Systems. And he quickly found himself summoned to appear before the Inquisition on charges of heresy. Galileo then was forced to recant his view for a sun-centered model and spent the rest of his life under house arrest. His works were finally dropped from the index of prohibited books in the year 1835. And in the year 1992, Pope John Paul II expressed regret over how the Galileo affair was handled. He officially conceded of the part of the church that the earth is not stationary and that the planets do orbit around the sun. Some of the things that Galileo wrote were all truths are easy to understand once they are discovered, but the point is to discover them. Now, he also said, I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with good sense, reason, and intellect has intended for us to forego their use. I like the way my pastor says it. He says the Holy Spirit is intelligent. Right, right. And that we ought to behave and act intelligently as well. So what we see from all of that, in hindsight, we see that just because a person doesn't believe something, it does not make it untrue. And the flip side of that is believing something doesn't necessarily make it true. A person can be sincere, but they can also be sincerely wrong. I want you to come and go with me to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, and when we get there, we will read verses 5 and 6. 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Say, got it when you have it? Got it. All right, I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. And I would like to speak to you from this thought, how to handle apparent adversity. How to handle apparent adversity. Now we've all heard the expression of the acronym fear, false evidence appearing real. We know that the Bible says that God does, did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a sound mind. Now Paul as he wrote this, this letter, was giving instruction to Timothy to care for the church at Ephesus while he was on his fourth missionary journey. When he realized that he may be in Macedonia for some time and might not make it back in the near future, Paul gave Timothy some instructions. He said, Timothy, take care of the affairs of this growing church. He said, appoint qualified church leaders those who are able to learn and those who are able to then teach what they learn. He said, uh, Timothy, I need for you to refute false teaching. You see, at that time, there was Gnosticism in the church. There was decadent Judaism in the church. There was false asceticism in the church. And for those of you who are not or may not be familiar with those terms, Gnosticism held that what you see here isn't 
really real. It said that the spiritual world was the only true world that existed and the physical world had no place. It also held that you had to learn special type of knowledge. That unless you knew that special knowledge, if you knew the code words, you, know, you could not get in the door. Said that Christianity was kind of like uh, having an incantation, open sesame. If you did not have those words, then you could not know God. Yeah. Now, decadent Judaism can be described as legalism. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, you had to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah. If you came to church, your head had to be eight inches off the ground and not six. Uh -huh. You had to wear your hair just so. Your makeup had to be just right. Uh -huh. Or you could not have been holy. Yeah. If you didn't take two steps to the left before you took three steps to the right, then you couldn't be serving God. Now false asceticism sort of says that, well maybe I can do something to please a holy God. Maybe if I said 32 Hail Marys. Maybe if I recited Psalm 23 42 times, then the Lord would forgive me. Something that I can do inside of myself, although being imperfect, possibly I could please a holy God. But Paul's writing corrected those misinterpretations. He cited some fundamental truths of the gospel. He said that there is only one God. He said that there is only one way to approach that God. And that is through the man who came in the flesh, Amen. the God-man, Christ Jesus. Right. Paul said that this Jesus gave himself up right. to die on a cross right. to pay a ransom for many. Right. Yeah. He said that we were slaves to sin mm -hmm. and that we needed to be rescued, not just us, but the entire human race. Right. He paints a picture that human beings could not help themselves. Right. We were utterly lost, right. totally depraved, mm -hmm. in complete darkness, right. and could not help ourselves. Mm -hmm. But this Christ, yes. this Jesus, yes. the one and only Son of God, yes. left heaven, yes. came to earth, yes. and redeemed us right. from our loss. Right. He said it was done at the right time. Right. And he said that God's desire was that all men oh. become saved yeah. and come to the knowledge of the truth. Right. Now those are the fundamentals. Uh -huh. yeah. Now all of us are aware of, of fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I know my wife is because she teaches basketball. Yeah. She calls it Skills and Drills Unlimited. Yeah. She teaches dribbling and, and passing and how to stand. Those are the the fundamentals. Yeah. Now when we do those things at the time, it may not seem like it's fun, yeah. but when we get into a game, when we get into the real deal of how to do these things, then we understand that the fundamentals were required. Right. Those of us who've been through school, we know that the fundamentals of math help us live our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah. You know, two plus two equals four. Yeah. If it were football, then we would know that blocking and Tackling, those are the fundamentals of the game. Stance, balance. If in the rational world, we know that the scientific method prevails. You have a theory, you test that theory. If it passes, you believe it. If under test it does not pass, you reject it. So Paul says there is only one God. Now Timothy had a challenge in front of him in this large and growing church. For those of you who have ever been in large organizations, you know that things can creep in unnoticed. When there are many people coming in, when there's a large amount of traffic, bad things can take place. Those of us who commute up and down Houston highways know that during rush hour, fender benders happen. Things that you did not want to participate in you may wind up participating in. Now then most Gentiles believe that there were many mediators of revelation, which is why there were a belief in many gods. 
Because of this polytheistic viewpoint, mm -hmm. along with the many opinions that came along with them, there was really no way for anyone to reach a final determination about anything. They said, how can one know the truth? They talk like Pilate, what is truth? Because every day and every person you hear a different story. Paul, however, reminds Timothy that he knows the word. And in the word, there is a verse called the Shema, found in Deuteronomy 6.4. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. He says that God has revealed himself in the very person of Jesus Christ. He says that God revealed his purpose for people through the words spoken by Jesus Christ. He says that God revealed his love through the actions of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1, 19 and 20 tells us that God has revealed his existence, his divine power, and his divine nature through his created world. And Romans 2 tells us that he has revealed his moral nature through the conscience that all people have the sense of right and wrong. So then, just from this evidence, every person on earth has the capacity to believe that there is only one great and powerful God Amen. who has control, who has to say so yeah. over what is right and what is moral. Right. He says that this perfect God yes. has one mediator mm -hmm. that's qualified mm -hmm. to touch man yeah, yeah. and to touch God. Right. Now a mediator is one who intervenes between two people yeah. who are at a variance. And the point is to reconcile. If there is a difference between people today, you don't necessarily have to go to a judge who will decide in favor of one or the other. But there is a mediator's court, there is a court of arbitration yeah. that seeks to get the two people to agree with each other yeah. instead of having a judgment one over the other. Yeah. Life doesn't always have to be a zero-sum game where one loses and the other wins, but agreements can take place. Yeah. This word mediator is not found in the Old Testament, but the idea is expressed in Job chapter 9 verse 33. Job said there is no umpire between us. Who may lay his hand upon us both? But this Jesus, fully God and fully man, has the ability to put his hand on God and to put his hand upon people. John 1 chapter 1 calls the Son of God the Word for good reason. Because words reveal our invisible thoughts. In the same way, Jesus made the invisible God visible. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, the one who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. No one has ever seen God but God, the one and only who is at the Father's side. Yeah. He's made him known to us. Yeah. Paul says, when you see Jesus, yeah. you see God. Right. Yeah. When did the Word become flesh? When did God become a human being? God the Son left heaven for a few short years. Right. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she became pregnant with a son. Yeah. And they said that his name would be called Emmanuel, yeah. God with us. God entered this physical world in a physical body and lived among us. No one has ever seen God's essence but God. The Son has made him visible to us and knowable. He said, anybody who has seen me has seen the Father. The Son is the radiance of God's glory. For those of us who wanted to see a trick, smoke and mirrors, razzmatazz, we didn't see it, but we saw a human being full of God's glory because he showed his love for us. Radius means the brightness and shining. His apostles saw it when he was transfigured on the mountain. The representation is the word character. 
Only here in the New Testament, it means a mark or a stamp on something. Yeah. It was clear to see that God had his stamp on Jesus Christ. It was clear to see that Jesus epitomized the Father's glory. Colossians 1.15 says that he is the image of the invisible God. Not only is Jesus the image of the invisible God, Jesus manifests the power of God. The word says that he sustains all things by his powerful word. Yeah. Colossians 1.17 says that in him all things hold together, and in him all things exist. Yeah. Scientists have been able to discover many things, yeah. but no scientist has ever discovered the power that keeps the atoms together. Right. No scientist has ever been able to explain how things hold in their place. Yeah. But scripture tells us it is this Jesus that holds everything together. Right. And the Bible also says that one day he's going to speak yeah. and it's all going to come flying apart. Yeah. Think about this. If he cares about the atoms and the stars, yeah. if he cares about the planets, yeah. how much more so do you think he cares about you? Yeah. If he will sustain nature, don't you think he will sustain you? Yeah. He says that the seasons are going to come and they're going to go all the way up until the end. Right. And he says, I am with you always. Yeah even to the end of this age. When we look around and we see the majestic majesty of his creation, when we look around and we think that he has seven billion people on this planet, when we look around and see that there is food enough for us all, there is air enough for us all, there is water enough for us all, is there anything that we ought to fret about? Is there anything that we ought to worry about? This great big God is big enough to handle everything. Right, right. Not only does he does all of that, Paul reminds Timothy that after he did all of that, he provided a purification for sin. Right. Seven words, but what a story they tell. How did the Son make it possible for us to be forgiven and be cleansed from our sin? He, God, in human form suffered and died on a cross right. to satisfy God's justice. Right. You see, we have a loving God, right. but we also have a holy God. Right. God does love us, but he is also righteous. Yeah. But he did not make us pay a price that we could not pay, right. but he wrapped his only son in human flesh, right. the perfect one, the only one able to make restitution, right. and he did so. Right. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Yes. That's a very important statement. Yes, sir. He sat down. Mm -hmm. Why did he sit down? Mm -hmm. He sat down because he was finished. Yeah. On the cross, he said, just tell us that. Yeah. It is all done. Yeah. What does that mean for you and me? He paid the price for sin, right. period. Yeah. He paid the price for sin permanently. Right. He paid the price for sin in the past. Yeah. He paid the price for sin today. Yeah. He paid the price for all sin in the future. Right. Isn't our God glorious? Yeah. Because it is finished, yeah. you are saved yeah. now uh -huh. and you are saved forever. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11 and 12 gives us a contract. It says that day after day, a priest stands and performs his religious duties. Day after day, week after week, year after year, he offers the same sacrifices. But they never took away our sin. Right. But when the priest did offer the sacrifices, there was no chair in the temple. There was no chair because he was never finished. Right. But we praise God that Jesus sat down yeah. at the right hand of the Father because it was complete. Right. So you say, okay, preacher, you've given us a whole lot of nice information today. Yeah. You gave us scriptural cross references, but what does all that mean to my day to day existence? Yeah. How do I apply this to my day to day life? I'm glad you asked. Donald Barnhouse said, 
Suppose a friend had a hotel room in Acapulco that overlooked the ocean on his vacation. And when he comes back, he tells you about that wonderful window that was in his room. He said it was one large pane of glass with four smaller panes on either side of it. It was six feet long and four feet high. The framework was made of steel that resists corrosion and rust. In fact, he even had the glass analyzed chemically. Would you not think that this person had missed the point? Would you think that the point was to actually enjoy the ocean view? I fear that many of us in the church today, we, we learn our facts. We memorize our Bible scripture. We come to church day after day, week after week, and month after month, and year after year. But sometimes we neglect the thing that we need to do most, which is to grow in our love for our Lord and Savior. Sometimes I think we go through the motions. We come to church and we hit the clock. We say, I came and I left. We look at our watches and we say, hurry up, preacher. The game is coming on at three, don't you know? Hurry up, preacher, my blood sugar is getting low. Hurry up, preacher, I got places to go and things to do. But I say sometimes we might miss the point. Because the point is to celebrate a risen Savior. Right. The point is to celebrate a holy God. Right. The point is to say how fantastic, yeah. how marvelous, and how amazing is a grace that can save a wretch like me. I think sometimes we do miss the point that God, yeah. a holy and wise God, yeah. thought that little puny you and me yeah. was worth sending his one and only son right. to pay the price right. and settle the penalty right. for what we did yesterday, yeah. for what we're doing right now, right. and for what we probably are going to do tomorrow. Right. I know that when we study our God, uh -huh. it would not be possible for us to be caught up in fear okay. from those who would say that you have to do it this way, or you have to do it that way. You have to stop doing this and start doing that. But God said, if you keep your hand in my hand, if you keep your eyes focused on me, if you submit to my Holy Spirit, then I got your back. See, the Bible is a window. We really don't have to memorize the pages, but we have to understand the message. When we look through the Bible, we ought to see Jesus Christ, yeah. the one and only Son of God. Yeah. And when we see Him, we ought to see God in His essential nature, right. totally complete, yeah. perfect in every way, full of love, yeah. full of power, yeah. and one who does not play. Right. If He says you have ears to hear, yeah. then you need to hear. Right. When we see Jesus Christ, yeah. We see our Heavenly Father. Right. Jesus said, if you want to know the love that the Father has for you, yeah. then I want you to know that I didn't come here on my own, right. but I was sent. Right. The Father loves you. Yeah. He said, if you want to know the Father, yeah. if you listen to the words that I say, yeah. I did not come up with these words on my own, yeah. but they were given to me. Yeah. If you see Jesus, yeah. you see the Father. Right. If you thought the feet on the cross was something special, yeah. then you need to understand that the Father sent him to accomplish the mission. Right. Have you realized today that the one who died in your place on the cross yeah. is really God, the Son, right. your creator, yes, and your sustainer? Right. Have you put your faith in him alone? Yeah. Not Jesus and church attendance. Oh, Lord. Not Jesus and scripture memory. Oh, no. Not Jesus and keeping some rules. But just Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because I want you to know that if you keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Yeah. And you do those things that he asks you to do. Yeah. Then you won't have time for foolishness. Yeah. Other things won't creep in unnoticed. Yeah. See Jesus is more than a vaccination against sin. Right. But he's a placeholder. Right. What Jesus said, if there is a strong man already in the house, yeah. then there's no one strong enough to break in the house and take anything. 
Because if the house is already occupied by the all-powerful one, yeah. then the weaker one has no place. Right. See, if I have a bazooka in my house, yeah. if I have a Gatling gun in my house, yeah. I doubt very seriously that anyone will creep in with a butcher knife. Because yeah. they won't make it. The old saying is, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Right, right. I want you to know that Jesus has the biggest gun. Yes, he does. He forgave your sins. Right. He gave you eternal life. Right. He made you a child of God. Right. And he is well able to make your current life productive, right. abundant, and meaningful. Oh, yes. Jesus said that I am the way. Yeah. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So I'd like to apologize to the Gnostics. I would like to apologize to the legalist. But I'm here to tell you there's only one way. Right. There's only one man. Right. And that is the man, Christ Jesus. Right. You can take it. You can leave it. You will live with it. Amen. Your eyes are open. Yeah. And your ears are wide. Yeah. Jesus is the way. Right. You can take it. Yeah. When we truly understand just who this Jesus is. Yeah. We can sit back, yeah. relax, right. and move forward no matter what. Right. Just as the earth revolves around the sun, yeah. we Christians ought to revolve yeah. around the Son of God. Yeah. We should cast all of our cares on Him yeah. because He cares for us. Right. Now what is the real deal? It doesn't matter who's in the White House. Right. It doesn't matter who sits in the Senate. Right. It doesn't matter who is your governor. Right. Proverbs 21 and 1 says that the king's heart is like channels of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wishes. Right. So I want you to know that you don't need the red phone hotline to the White House. You don't need the red line hotline to the Kremlin. You don't need the personal number of the governor. You don't even need to dial J-E-S-U-S. The only thing you need to do is lift up your eyes toward heaven and say, my Lord, my Father, help me on today. You see, we don't need any telephone lines, telegraph lines, internet service. Jesus' line is open 24 hours, seven days a week. You're right, right. The song says Jesus is on the main line. We only need to tell him what we want. So see, you in the church ought to shout today. You in the church ought to be happy today. Because it doesn't matter who's elected. It doesn't matter who's anywhere in any sorts of power. Because when we look around, our God hung the stars. Our God slung the planets. Our God controls all of that. And if he can do all of that, he can sustain you. Right. There are some of you here that made it through all of the financial downturns and nothing ever touched you. There are those of you who saw other people suffer. And God has still blessed you through it all. Right. So there is no need to have our heads hang low. Right. There is no need whatsoever yeah. to worry or fret. God is still on the throne. Right. The Bible says that he sat down. Yeah. And you know one day he's going to get up. Right. Because the Bible says that he is going to descend one day with a shout. Right. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And those of us who remain are going to be caught up in the air. And I want you to know that on that great day of the Lord, there's going to be a turnaround. And see, when things turn around, he's not only going to sit down on the throne in heaven like he's done, but he's going to sit down on his throne on the earth. And when he sits down on that earthly throne, he says that every knee has to bow. Right. And every tongue has to confess right. that Jesus is Lord. So don't you sweat it right now. Don't you worry. Don't lose any sleep whatsoever because God is able. May God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you until he returns. Amen.